Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Miss Brianne, and welcome back to our Let's Get Ready series. And this is the series that goes from preschool all the way to third grade. So you, in order for, to review the skills you need, in order to be successful in your elementary school careers. In this program, we will be recognizing print recognition, hand, pre-handwriting, handwriting skills, phonemic awareness, phonics, scissor skills, and all that fun stuff. Now, this session for today is geared towards young children in pre-kindergarten who are preparing to go into kindergarten, as well as students who are already in kindergarten in order for them to review the skills they need to know in order to be successful in kindergarten. Now, for this series, we have two new books that I'm going to show you today. And again, they are wordless picture books. And this will actually be the last time we go over wordless picture books. And then next session, we are going to be moving on to our simple print books. Does that sound like fun, boys and girls? But as I've always mentioned before, parents, when I begin teaching children how to read, I always start with the wordless picture books. That way they can make up the story as they go along and they don't have to worry about trying to memorize words or learning how to pronounce or sound out words. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It introduces them to how a book flows and it takes away that added pressure. But I have two great picture book, wordless picture books to share with you today. And then we're going to have another fun pre-handwriting activity. Does that sound like a plan, boys and girls? All right, let's begin. Just give me a second. All right, so we have our we have two wordless picture books. And this book, picture book here is a Caldecott Honor book. And the award is awarded to the to the best picture book of the year. Now, this did not win, but did receive a special notice because the judges like the book a lot. But this book is called The Red Book. doesn't really have the title, but it's called The Red Book, as you can see by the red cover. So, The Red Book. The author and illustrator is Barbara Lehman. Now, the author is the person who writes the words to the story, and the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures in the story. Barbara Lehman did both. And then we have the publisher, which is that company that puts, puts the book together into print and sends it to the bookstores in order for them to sell. And the publisher here is Houghton Mifflin Company. So, with that being said, are we ready to begin? Okay, here we go. So, let's look at the first picture. What do you think that is, boys and girls? Is this a city? Or is it a farm? Or is it a neighborhood that maybe you boys and girls live in? Like West Hampton Beach. Well, judging by the many buildings you see in the, and the cars and the roads, I would say it's a city. And who do you see walking? Looks like it's a boy walking in the city. Let's see what happens. So take a look. And what do you think it is, boys and girls? Is it summer like it is now? Or could it be another season? Do you think it's winter? How can you tell? Well, 
it looks like you can tell from the snow on the ground and the fact that he has a coat and boots and a hat and a scarf and mittens. So it's definitely winter time. But anyway, it looks like he's walking and it looks like he sees something red. What could it be, boys and girls? Well, let's move on to find out. So it looks like he found a book and the boy is very happy. So it looks like he's running now and it looks like he's now in school. And as the teacher is teaching what looks like to be a, I don't know what lesson it is, it could be math, it could be reading, who knows. But the boy won't stop thinking about the book. Well, let's see what happens with the book. So, the boy is very curious, so he opens up the red book and it, it looks like he sees a variety of different islands. And then it zeroes in on this one particular little island here. Then it looks like it's a beach on the island. And look, it looks like there's another boy walking on the beach. How cool is that? Could this be real life? Could he be part of the story? Well, let's see. So the other boy is walking on the beach, and what do you do? You, what do you think the weather is? Do you think it's winter in here at the beach? What do you think the season is? Well, it could be summer on this island. It's nice and sunny. The boy is dressed up in a t-shirt and shorts. So it's probably warm or hot weather, right boys and girls? But the boy is walking along the beach and oh, he spots a red book. So he picks up a red book and looks at it. And it looks like he's looking at a picture of the city. Probably the same city the other boy is looking at. So now it's zeroing in on, on a building, and it's zeroing in on this particular building here, and further into the building by this window, and in the window, it's the other boy looking at the red book. And then they look at each other all confused, like, what's going on here? Can he see me? Wouldn't you be a little, cr wouldn't you be a little spooked by that boys and girls wait a minute it's like wait a minute i'm supposed to be looking at a story is this real life isn't it crazy boys and girls They don't seem very scared for long. It looks like they're happy to actually see each other. Do you think they'll become good friends, boys and girls? And it looks like the rest of the class is leaving, probably going to lunch. Well, let's find out what happens. So it looks like school is over for today, so everybody's packing up and leaving. The other boy is walking in the city streets, and he spots somebody who's selling balloons. What do you think? Do you think the boy will get a balloon?
Well, let's see. So, the boy gets a ton of balloons from the sales guy and is flying away in the sky with a ton of holding a ton of balloons and holding the red book. Do you think you're going to really fly with a bunch of balloons, boys and girls? What do you think? And what do you think will happen? Do you think he'll lose the red book? Well, let's find out. But the boy is flying through the city. And, uh-oh! Look what happened! The red book got accidentally dropped and it's falling to the ground. Oh no, what do you think will happen? Well, let's see. And as the other boy is flying away with the balloons, it looks like the other boy is looking and sees his friend flying away. And so now he's very sad. But, looks like his friend is flying to the island. And now they can meet each, they can meet each other and be friends in person. Isn't that cool, boys and girls? But while that's happening, the red book has fallen to the ground. What do you think is going to happen? you think the book will stay there? What do you think, boys and girls? Well, let's find out. Oh, it looks like an older boy on a bicycle found the red book and picked it up. He's going to be in for a great adventure, right boys and girls? <laughs> and that is the end of the story. What, did you, what do you think, boys and girls? Do you think it would be cool to find a book and actually see somebody else looking at a book in real life? Would it be? Do you think it would be fun to make a friend through a book? What do you think, boys and girls? Well, in any event, that was a great story. I hope you enjoyed it. But now let's move on to our other wordless picture book. And this is a fun picture book that you could, you could probably do some of this stuff at night with your mom and dad when it gets dark out. Because there's a lot of different animals and insects in the dark than they are in the daytime. And this book is called Flashlight. So a flashlight. The author and illustrator is Lizzie Boyd. And the publisher is Chronicle Books LLC. Alright, so are we ready to begin? Alright, let's get started. So a boy is walking in the woods in the dark, and it looks like he it looks like he's about to head home. Well, actually, he's camping. It looks like he wants to go exploring. 
So he look, tries to look for his boots. He has one, so he needs to find the other, and with the flashlight, he found the other book, the boot. It's nice to see things almost look like they're daytime with a flashlight, huh, boys and girls? So now that he has his boots on, he's going exploring. He aims his flashlight around, and what does he see? Yes, he sees bats. Bats usually don't come out fly in the daytime. They only fly at night. That's when they find the insects they need. So he's continuing to wander, and it's a nice full moon, and he aims his flashlight at the ground. What else does he see, boys and girls? Looks like he sees mice. Mice typically like to come out at night because no other humans are around. And he aims his flashlight, then he aims his flashlight at a tree, and what does he see? Looks like he sees an owl. How cool is that? Let's see what else he can find. So he aims his flashlight at the ground again. What does he see? He sees two skunks. Then he aims his flashlight at the pond. And what does he see in the pond? Well, it doesn't look like he's seeing any other animals, but it's fun to look at the inside of a pond, right, boys and girls? Let's see what else he can find. And it looks like Xbox Sport, he finds a porcupine and some leaves on the ground. How cool is that? Sometimes when you see stuff in the daytime, sometimes it can look even cooler at night. Right, boys and girls? So he looks up in the tree and finds another porcupine. And he also finds fish swimming in another pond. Then he decides to aim his flashlight all the way across the woods. And uh oh, what does he find? looks like a fox. So what do you think, boys and girls? Do you, what other fun animals and insects do you think the boy will find? Well, let's find out. So we continue to explore. Looks like he finds some towels that are hanging in the yard of a neighbor. And it looks like he found some eat, partly eaten apples on the ground. Cool, huh? Then he continues to explore. And he finds a deer. How cool is that? Then he decides to take a break. Looks like he's eating an apple and he left his flashlight on the ground. But what do you think? What do you think the boy did after he ate the apple? Well, it looks like he's falling asleep. What do you think's going to happen, boys and girls? Do you think he's really asleep? What do you think will happen to the flashlight? 
Should we go on to find out? Well, it looks like he didn't really sleep and is about to go exploring again, but uh-oh! It looks like he tripped over a rock and his flashlight flew across the, gr across the woods and into the ground. Uh-oh, that's not good, right boys and girls? Well, let's see what else happens. So the boy is like, either he's still tripping or he's running trying to get his flashlight. And it looks like all the animals are watching him. Uh-oh. It looks like he was still tripping because he now falls on the ground. And look, it looks like a raccoon has the flashlight and is aiming it at the boy. Uh-oh. Now we have a raccoon with a flashlight. What do you think will happen? Do you think all the other animals will want to play with the flashlight? Or do you think the boy will get his flashlight back? Well, let's see. Looks like the boy doesn't really seem to mind and all the other animals are having a turn with the flashlight and they're aiming the flashlight at him. So it looks like the beaver has a, the flashlight and then the two skunks have it. But the boy doesn't really seem that sad about it. He actually seems happy that the animals are having fun. What do you think, boys and girls? If a bunch of animals start playing with your flashlight, would you be mad or would you be happy? Well, why don't we find out what happens next? Now the Looks like the deer has the flashlight. Looks like they're having fun with the flashlight now. And again, the boy seems really happy. And then, looks like the squirrels have the flashlight now. So every single animal in the woods is playing with the flashlight. Then, the owl now has the flashlight, and it looks like the boy, it looks like he's walking somewhere, and this time all the animals are following him. What do you think is going to happen, boys and girls? And it looks like the owl is pointing the flashlight towards the tent so the boy knows where to go. And it looks like he's done exploring for the night. So the boy happily settles in his tent. And finally, it looks like the mice are holding a flashlight as he's reading, as the boy is reading a book. And that is the end of the story. So what did you think, boys and girls? Was that a fun book to look at? Does that make you want to go exploring at night with a flashlight to see all the cool animals and bugs and fish that, have, that only appear at night? Does sound like fun, doesn't it, boys and girls? But remember, if you do do this, make sure you have your mom or your dad with you when you go exploring at night because it is very dark out. But anyway, those were fun stories to read. I hope you enjoyed them. I certainly enjoyed reading them along with you. But what do you say? Is it time for activity now? Well, give me a couple minutes and I'm going to aim towards the table so you can see the activity. All right, just give me two minutes. So, 
when you go into kindergarten, you're going to learn some simple handwriting skills. You'll probably start to learn your letters for the first time. But before you start to learn how to write your letters, it's nice to get a little practice in drawing simple lines and shapes. That way you don't have to worry about forming a letter or putting one together and telling the difference between an uppercase letter and a lowercase letter. You can just simply have fun and it will allow you certain teach you specific skills like learning how to hold a pencil. Cool, huh? And this is going to be a great activity. Parents, not only does it strengthen their fine motor skills so they can eventually learn handwriting, but it has a nice sensory input in that they can feel certain textures and see various colors while they're practicing this. And this is called rainbow salt line and shape drawing. How about that? And I'm going to go over the step-by-steps on how to put together the tray as well as learn, showing you how to have your child practice this. So, when you register for this program, oh, before I begin, let me say that this activity was developed by Jan Janice Davis for the, on the website Learning for Kids. So if you're interested in this activity as well as other similar activities, please click on the web link in the video description. Now, when you registered, you should have gotten a kit that contained construction paper in six different colors. And they are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. In but in addition to those papers, you should have the following with you. You should have some type of tray like this, so just this one over here, a paintbrush, or anything that you can use, that your child can use to draw in, table salt, and if you want, this some tape to fix the rainbow pattern together. Now, to put together the tray, here's what you do. First, you're going to take the tray and you're going to line up the, co the colored construction paper like so and just arrange it until the entire tray is covered. There we go. like that. And if you feel more comfortable, you can put some of this together with tape. Just tape it together so it stays in place. You don't need much, just a couple of pieces and it should stay. Now once you have that, you're going to take your salt. Actually, let me scan that back a little so you can actually see what I'm doing. You're going to take your table salt and you're going to scatter it all over the tray until the whole, until the paper is covered. Like so. Then you can smooth it out to color excess spots if you like. So, that's how to try. So with that being said, next you, that's when your child can take the paintbrush and start drawing I think I may put a little too much salt 
Let me get a bigger paintbrush. That's when your child can take the paintbrush and start drawing all the way across. And then you... Yeah, actually, let me get rid of some of this salt. That's when you try to take the paintbrush and draw and just keep drawing until they see the cool rainbow pattern. How neat is that? Now they can either, and you just shake it to move, to put the salt back in place. Now you could have, there's two options you do it. You can have your child Draw any type of shape they want. Like so. Or you can practice drawing a shape and then have your child copy it. And you can go over your lines and shapes this way. And you just, and you could practice this as long as your child wants. Lesson is make sure you don't put too much salt in the tray. And you just, and just have fun with it. But with that being said, that is how you make a rainbow salt tray to practice with. So anyway, I hope you had fun with that boys and girls. I certainly had fun doing, showing you this activity. And just so you know, in your craft kits, you'll also have additional work, you'll have worksheets that you can continue to practice your line and shape drawing skills with. But anyway, I hope you had fun. I certainly had fun doing this. But until next time, this is Miss Brianne saying take good care of yourselves. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.